come first and foremost and give all praise to Yahweh. The one who passes God is a great millstone that we will. Shall we want to live in the house of God and the Lord to save me and continue fighting for the faith? Lord willing, we all find that number to be delivered. Until then, you know, coming out, prophesying, testimonies, you know, scriptures, anything that we can give, give you that's edifying, Lord willing, it's edifying. Alright, so we're going to go off the top. No script in here. If you really got anything, bring it out. Whatever you got. Hey, you want to see? So this is our uh, second Ezra, uh, 15, that at one. And it reads, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Right, we were just talking about how the prophecies are now starting to unfold at a more rapid rate. And these things are happening, man, right before your very eyes. When we first came into this thing, 2008, 2009, 2010, right around there, you wasn't seeing all these prophecies unfolding. We were reading about them, we were prophesying about them, but now they're actually coming to pass, man. And they're coming to pass much more faster than we could ever believe. And before you know it, it's going to be a hot World War III, man. Right now, these nations are just gearing up, right? Okay. We're telling you these things. We're prophesying about these things. And these are the things that are, that should be now piquing your interest, right? We ain't going to sit there and come out here and talk and tell you about, you know, you know the, the, the small things. We're going to tell you about the big things that are going on in this world. And the big things and the major things is what? The Lord raising up these nations to bring that third world destruction, man. That's right. Go ahead. Now, this is from the news article. It says, the headline read, Washer set to gain access, access to Atlantic port. Right. He says, while right here, Russia is forced to gain access to, the, to a naval port in the Atlantic Ocean to a literal military cooperation agreement with the island nation of Sao Tom and Pisi, located off the west coast of Africa. A bill, a bill on, on the issue has been approved by a Washington government commission on, leg on legacy activity we put it on Monday, sounding so familiar with, with the discussion. So what was what, what's happening, Russia is, is setting the more than ever in the Atlantic, Atlantic Coast Ocean, right close to the west coast of Africa. So Russia is starting to gain support. He's trying to get support and get an ally throughout the, the African continent. Now he's setting military base on part of, on, on, on the ocean. You know, naval bases here, naval bases there. Why close to the, uh, in the, in the, in the Atlantic Ocean? Right, but it's all part of that BRICS nation. Yeah. They're all going to support one another. They all have interest in one another. So these ports that are going to be developed, these, these military bases that are going to be developed, is all being developed for this Third World's War. Everything's going to add up to the war, man. Everything. All these maneuvers they're putting together, all these alliances that are coming together, it's all adding up for that great future judgment that the Lord's going to send over here, man. And I don't think a lot of people are putting these things together. They're thinking that, as always, throughout history, we all can attest to it for as long as we've been on this planet. We always have a skirmish, we always have a rumor of war, we always have some conflict. Donald Trump said what? He would wish that um, Ukraine would enter into some peace agreement, some peace talks. Because that's usually the course of action that goes down when there's some type of dispute or conflict between countries or nations, right? But there's going to be no peace talks, man. It's just going to come to a full blown all out war, man. Now, this is another article here where he says, Warshaw's warship pays first visit to African state. Right. You know? Right, right. And, and, and these African countries, African um, uh, ambassadors and presidents, yep. they're in full, they're in full oblige of Russia bringing these ships over there, man. Because mm -hmm. again, you got to set your pieces up. It's like a chess game right now. Everybody's playing it, putting their pieces right where they need to be. Go ahead. And he says, the Washer Derby ship, can't say the name, Smalley, has docked at Cameroon's largest port, Doula, as part of the Atlantic tour. Now, you don't think America's watching these things? Mm -hmm. Of course they're watching these things. But America can't do a goddamn thing about it. Man. Because at the end of the day, America's going to be wiped off the face of the earth right. by All these right. nations. And those nations that don't have nuclear capability, shoot rockets over here, what they're going to do? They're going to get the troops that are on the ground. The boots that are on the ground, these nations are going to get them, man. And you see these, these hermetic nations, these wild nations, you watch that movie, Black Hawk Down. When that helicopter was spiraling out of control, 
had them Edomites in there. There's like three or four Edomites in the helicopter. When niggas came up in there, shoot, boom, boom, just terrorizing them, man. Go ahead. And he says right here, the Baltic Fleet 20 ship visit marked the first time a Washington military vessel has entered Cameroonian, which is in West Coast of Africa, water, the ambassador said on the Telegram channel. The mission described as the expedition as historic event, opening a new chapter in defense tie between two countries. So now two countries for the first time ever mm -hmm. in, in, in Africa are now tying in alliance with each other. And Kamu in the, in the country name is Yonda, can't pronounce it, like Yakim, you know? But it goes to show that they, they're now tied together and they allow all them Neville from Russia to do a joint exercise while at their border, you know? And, and that spelled big trouble for, for America. And, and, they, and, and they're nervous about it. But they, but you're not hearing too much of it in the news media such as Fox News saying in news because why now all they're doing it they, all they're doing in those news is talk about Didi's case. Why wow, they get everybody so focused on Didi 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 and the thing that he does. Meanwhile, all the nation of of gathering alliance, you know, and that should strike fear in the in, in the American people here in in the U.S. But they're gonna keep their eyes focused and distracted by something else to keep the people from knowing what's really about to happen. Well, that's, that's, that's what's going down. You brothers know, we know, but yeah. we being the prophets, we got to tell you these things, right? right. So what, what, what you got? Give me, give me Jeremiah 50, uh, 51. Gotcha. Start to talk on that. Uh, uh, okay. uh, Revelations 11 and uh, 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly. Right, and we understand that those woes mean destruction. Right. That second woe is past, that second world war has passed. Behold, the third world comes quickly. And now, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, we have now been given the, 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 the pleasure, if you will, to be a part of the Lord's program, man, by prophesying it down for him, by prophesying the warnings of all these wars that are about to go down out there, man. And America's, and America's the bullseye. You know, you've got the archer and the bullseye, and the bullseye's downrange. Mm -hmm. America's that bullseye. Go ahead, Elder. This is uh, uh, Matthew 24, and I'm going to start at 3. It says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Mashiach, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Right, let me say this real quick. Yep. Now, you've always had nations rising against nations. You've always had these, these forces going down. But what makes it more effective now is the other prophecies that the scriptures speak of about things going on in the world. Now they're all coming together at the same time. Which now gives us the understanding. Now we know the end is in and the return of the hour shy is right around the corner. When you had the Cuban War crisis, you didn't have the abundance of earthquakes in the, in the earth. When you had the Cuban Missile Crisis, I should say, when you had the Cuban Missile Crisis, the, the, the amount of poverty wasn't as high in the world at that time. And likewise, the amount of the shortage of food when the Cuban Missile Crisis was going on. But now we see all these things happen right after another, one after another, man. So this is, therefore we understand that this is the time that we're talking about. Go ahead, brother. Yep. This is uh, verse seven. It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences yep. and earthquakes yep. in diverse places. Right, you see that? There shall be famine, and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, can, can, you, can you get that article, that, that port? Yep. Yep. port? Get that out. Because that's going to tie in with the famine as well. All these ships and all these ports, and even the trucking system, man. That's what's going to bring the famine because it's going to be a screeching halt to everything that you see go down. Good, good. They call it a supply chain. That's right. Give me Ecclesiastes the, uh, chapter 12. All right. So get that. Read a little bit of that article, brother. All right. Yeah. Published by uh, CNN yep. on September 27th this year. It says port workers from Maine or Texas are set to strike Tuesday. Expect shortages and higher prices. Going down into the article a bit. Longshore workers at ports 
from the Texas are set to walk off the job early Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Staging what could become the most disruptive strike to the U.S. economy in decades. You see that? Now, we ain't saying we don't know what's actually going to happen, but this is what's being reported, all right? Right up and down the East Coast, man. They're looking to shut shit down. And a, and a majority of that is going to now trickle right down. Because once one group starts striking, they go, well, we want some bread too. Then the truckers are going to start striking. All these other nations, all these other uh, countries and states are going to start striking. And there goes your, 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 as the elder said, your chain, your food chain, your, your supply chain. There goes that shit right out the window. All right, read a little bit more. It says, the strike could stop the flow of a wide variety of goods over the docks of almost all the cargo ports on the East Coast and Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. Everything from bananas to European wine and liquor, among, along with clothes, toys, household goods, and European autos. Yep. And you name, listen, the majority of your, of your commerce comes through via truckers over the road and ships over the sea. Oh, yeah. That, that's the majority of it right there. And when those shit starts shutting down, you in trouble, man. You people not, in trouble. Go ahead. Not, not much. It's, it's all poetic, right? Because it's the, the Heavenly Father set this place up to be destroyed in this mm -hmm. world, right? When you go to, when you go to uh, Revelation, the 18th chapter, it talks about uh, a, a nation that all the other nations ate off of because of their, their uh, imports, right? So there was a time where the United States of America um, uh, uh, how do you say, manufactured uh, a lot of goods, 90 of right? 90% of his goods were manufactured here at home, right? Uh, here in the Northeast, it was a, a booming uh, shoe industry, especially here in Massachusetts. Auto industry. Auto industry in, uh, in the Midwest, in Detroit, right? Um, they were, like, for instance, things like, uh, like here in Massachusetts, they're, they're, a, lot of, a lot of the factories, the shoe factories, the cotton factories, all of the cotton that was coming from the south, they were being shipped and imported, I'm sorry, not uh, imported, but shipped here to the northeast so they can uh, use those cottons in, uh, to, to make sweaters and clothes and all those, all those kind of things, right? <coughs> so now the Heavenly Father has removed all of that uh, manufacturing to other places. And that's why you got this guy, Donald Trump, his, one of his main, uh, let's say, uh, running campaigns is keeping the work here. And really, that's what you, you want to do as a business. If exporting things or importing things that, that, that. Uh, uh, and the cost of that is going up, you want to you want to keep the work here, right? So he, he's he's thinking like a like a businessman, but really, there's nothing you can do to, to heal this place. Like the scripture said, we would have healed Babylon, but it would not be healed, here, right? So all of it goes uh, uh, hand in hand with what the scripture said, right? So all of these, even though. We don't know what's going to come of the strike. We don't know what's going to come of uh, them shutting down the, the seaports. But we know that something like that is going to cause a ripple effect. Because like the elder said, it's a, it's a chain, right? You go from the, the shipping industry to the trucking industry to the grocery industry, right? To the clothing industry. Everything from, from top to bottom is going to be affected if we're not getting any more imports, right? So ultimately, the destruction of America is really what's going to uh, in those imports, like when they, when they, the scriptures talk about it being destroyed in an hour, that's really what's going to disrupt the supply chain, right? But these things are the start of it, right? To see how how much America is, let's say, a part of the world economy, right? We talk about the dollar, right? And the dollar being uh, the world's reserve currency. The reason why it's still the world's reserve currency is because you buy oil with dollar, and they call it the petrodollar, right? And so. As long as America is in, in the, the, is the epicenter of all imports, it's the, 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 the place can, can flow, everything can flow. But if anything shuts down here, the whole economy is done. I, I, got, I got another other call. It's, it's with the U.S. Attorney. I've got that port. Good. Now, this is from the um, Global News you know, the, dot com. And he says, a U.S. port shutdown is nearing. The impact on Canada could be severe. Right. See, again, the impact on Canada as well. So it's going to be a lot of impact on, on all levels, man. Up and down the western, the, uh, the eastern seaboard. And this is a beautiful thing for us because we understand that these are the things that are bringing the end of the, the, the Babylon the Great, if you will. These are the things that are going to usher in the destruction of Babylon. But it's going to it's going to severely break down internally first before the Lord send them a message over here. That's 
why they speak about these uprisings. That's why we speak about the insurrections. That's why we speak about the, the civil wars that are going to be taking place in here. Because most of these things are going to happen because of lack of food, lack of water, lack of money, lack of lack of safety, lack of comfort. See, go ahead. And he says, Canadian business are nervously waiting for the impact of a fast approaching dark workers strike at U.S. Right now, was one of the brothers in, in the brothers down in in, uh, in Georgia with that flood and that hurricane that came through there. A lot of them they got no power. Yep. A lot of them's jobs shut down. Who knows how long it's going to be? Just, but just, just this, stuff, right? but, but this is the thing you got to trust in your house, your house shy. You know that the Lord's going to cover you regardless of what goes down. But the majority of the masses who are outside this thing of ours, who don't know anything about the Lord and don't believe in the Lord, they're going to suffer, man. Because it's only going to be the Spirit of the Lord that gets you through these hard coming times. Right? And this is why being prophet to the Lord, we come out and we warn you, we prophesy, we tell, we tell you about all these things that are going down. And you best take heed to it. Because the Lord's words are what? Basically true. All right? And he, and he said, um, I got some on that. And he said, East Coast ports that could cripple continental supply chain. Mm -hmm. A situation that could become even worse as labor disruption spread to ports up north. Right. See, what's left What's left of America's business, what's, less of, what's left of the manufacturing of America is, all, is almost down to, to bare bones, man. Even the farming industry. Most of your food and your, your products are coming from other countries, man. Once them ships stop flowing through, once, and this is what, and honestly, this is what the majority of these wars are going down over in the, in the Middle East, man. They want to get, they want to capture certain river ports, certain streets. They want to capture certain ports that manufacture or or have um, the ability to, to um, have ships and, and, and commerce flow through those those, those river ports, man. All right, hold it right there. Let me get that right there. Uh, Ecclesiastes. 12 and 1. Yep. Remember now the Creator in the days of thy youth, mm -hmm. while the evil days come not. Right. The evil days come not. So right now, the evil days aren't here. But we understand and, and know that they're slowly coming upon the people. People are now starting to get worried. People are now starting to say, hey, wait a minute, what, what, what do we do from here? Go ahead, read on, brother. Uh, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, mm -hmm. when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Go ahead. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars, be not darkened, yep. nor the clouds return after the rain. Go ahead. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, mm -hmm. and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because there are few. Right mm -hmm. now, the keepers of the house are trembling, and the grinding cease. What are you talking? We're talking about on 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 a, on a daily basis the things that make America run, man. Right. The things that keep people going to work, people getting money, paying their bills. These things are going to soon cease, man. And then it's going to be, as we jump back into the second edge to the 15th chapter, a man's not going to have pity on his neighbor. All these things are all adding up, man. Now it's all making sense. Ten years ago, people couldn't see the vision because why? Give me have a quick chapter two. People couldn't see the vision because they wasn't understanding the pieces of the puzzle and how it was being put together. But now that the brothers, the Lord put the brothers on the highways and byways, and everybody's now starting to hear this thing, it's being noised abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now people are like, oh shit, you don't see too much shit going, too much shit talkers, man. You still got a handful because the Lord, it's necessary that they be there. But the bulk of these people, now they're starting to realize, well, wait a minute, what's gonna happen if this happens? What's gonna happen if the fuel shortage, if the fuel, if the fuel shortage comes into play? You see? Now we'll go ahead and finish up. Yep. Uh, and those that look out of the windows be darkened, right. and the doors shall be shut in the streets yep. when the sound of when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, right. and all the daughters of music shall be brought. Oh, right. Now going back to them southern states that that hurricane went through, a lot of them lost. They got fucked up down there. Yeah, a lot of power's gone, jobs are gone. Yeah. All right. So now people are starting to feel the effects. Not only are the jobs gone, but people's homes got wiped out, man. So where are they going to turn to? They sitting there calling to the government, we need FEMA, FEMA, FEMA. FEMA's only dealing with a select few, man. Yeah. So you're going to have to sit there and try to figure it out. You ain't got a house to sleep in. You ain't got a car to sleep in. You can't go to your neighbors because they're in the same position, man. You ain't got no power. So this is going, it's going to become very real when it starts you know, making its way up the East Coast. When it starts making its way back down the East Coast with the food, with the shortage, with the ports, all these things are now rising on the on the horizon. Now we'll be going to the 
shortages too. So there's a lot of cities that's not the water right now. Yeah. A lot of highways actually they broke apart. Yeah. So that, that's another right. cause that right. caused of the right. trucks not being able to make it up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because you've got some of the infrastructures on the, some of these bridges, some of the roads, there's, there's uh, what do they call the sinkholes, the ground employment, so trees, and that's what water does too, because water's going to find its way. It's going to find its way, and when it gets under underground, it starts loosening up that, that, that foundation, next thing you know, all of a sudden it just landslides. Go ahead, brother. I, I see you, brother. Hold tight. Uh, this brother, this brother, brother, jump out his boots. <laughs> oh, no, no. Tighten them shoes up, brother. Uh, this is from endtimeheadlines.org. Go ahead, brother. The heading reads, uh, Hurricane Helene uh, brings worse flooding in over 100 years across the south. You imagine Death that? tolls continue to climb. Damn. Over 100 years. And, and again, now, real quick, now, now they're starting to see biblical proportions. They're going back to those turtles. Biblical <laughs> 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 I, I knew I knew the name of the hurricane. Mm -hmm. I knew this. But I'm looking at it. The, that word right there is a uh, word that's used for evil. Yeah. Evil. Yeah. 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 So when you when you go into the scriptures where it says uh, Greek or Greek, uh, Greek or Gentile, that, that that word shows up there. And that's a flood that's flooded uh, America. Yeah. 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 Wow. Hey, it's all spiritual. Yeah. It's all spiritual. We're coming down that wow. Well, these spiritual, these spiritual nuggets are now being revealed unto the servants of prophets. Yes. You ain't gonna put these things together, man. Right? Now, now, Go ahead. Now, let, me, let me get this brother. Boy. He jump out his socks. <laughs> hey, brother. Now, 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 this article. Hey, you also go back to white boy. Yes, and you think about the um the granites, the granites, yeah. and then you got the window be darkened. Yeah. Now it says right here in the bottom, the International Long Horsemen Association which represent roughly 45,000 dark workers at 36 seaports from Texas to Maine have threatened to walk off the job on October 1st. Right. This so October that's coming. Right. That's a couple days. <laughs> yep. A couple yeah, days. You can't, you can't turn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this October that's coming, yeah. man. So they represent 45,000 people. So uh, union now mind you they're union workers <laughs> from, from Texas right? to Maine so so these individuals usually usually with union workers if a, if a job breaks down they'll send you somewhere else all right so now they're also going to be in a quagmire because this is right up and down the east coast this right. is what they do we're we're the sea we're the sea coast yeah. you no know, go ahead brother so the 13 colonies established yep I was, coast. he took this spirit but I was thinking about some 13 colonies yeah but hey it's all here man it's all here. And now the grinding's gonna cease. People are gonna have no pity upon their neighbor because you have to feed your, your family somehow. Mm -hmm. And again, here we are. All right, I got we, that. Right. Who you call for Habakkuk? Yep, go ahead. Give what you got. What you got? Give me. I have second answer 15. All right, give me Habakkuk real quick. I got you. Uh, this is Habakkuk chapter 2. Start, yeah, start at the top. top. All right. <laughs> Have Luke chapter two verse one. It says, "I will stand upon my watch, mm -hmm. and set me upon the tower, mm -hmm. and will watch to see what he will say unto me, mm -hmm. and what shall I answer when I am when when I am reproved?" And the Lord answered me and said, "Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, yep. that he may run that readeth." Right. We talked about that vision that a lot of people can't they can't see this vision. All right. The vision's been written, right. and now the Lord had to set men up to speak about that vision to tell that vision. And make it plain. It's plain to us what we see is going on. It's plain to us to know that the Lord is dealing with us in the sense that He's given us His word. We come out here on the highways and byways. We prophesy about the things He commanded us to prophesy about. But to the masses, they'll come up here and stand here and they're like, they just don't get it, they just can't see it, which is fine. But they're going to feel it. They may not see it, but they're going to feel it, whether it be in the wallet, whether it be in the refrigerator whether it be in the housing market, they're going to feel these things. And we've been telling them. Go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Verse three, and verse three, it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, right. but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Right, and this is another reason why they can't see it. When the scripture says the vision is yet for an appointed time, when we come out here and say these things, what do they tell you? Oh, that's not gonna happen in this lifetime. That's not in our lifetime. Yes, it, it is this lifetime, man. Just look, again, going back to what we spoke about when the Lord said, Knowing, knowing that these things are, 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 are coming around in the book of Matthew 24th chapter, we have the what? Everything has to be put together at the same time for, we to, for us to understand that now is the time for these visions to now start unfolding right before.
Well, our very eyes. It's, it's a jigsaw puzzle. That's it. That's it. A lot of people want to read it uh, uh, like a like a novel, right. but it's really a, a jigsaw puzzle. When you when you take that jigsaw puzzle, you dump out all the pieces. There's pieces everywhere. You 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 know and understand that they all go together. But then you got to do a piece at a time in order for the picture to materialize, right? So you might do the borders over here, you might do a cone over there, a cone over there. But, if, but once you put all the pieces together, it makes one full picture. Right. Speaking on that too, you have different, there's different jigsaw puzzles with different amount of pieces. The simple ones, you got like a 20 piece jigsaw, you know, oh yeah, people can understand that. But when you get into the 1200 piece jigsaw, mm -hmm. this is the 1200 piece jigsaw we're dealing with. Because people get, oh, this is too much. And then, ah, fuck it, I don't want to I can't deal with it. But this is, the, this is what's happening. People don't want to deal with the reality of what's going on. Because they've never seen anything like this before. They've never heard these things before. So therefore, the fear in them won't allow them to, to, to have it overtake them and be like, ah, these guys, they're crazy, they're crazy. Because that's the only solution you can come up with. Is to say that we're crazy because it's the fear inside of you that want to, don't want to realize that this thing's a fake from the truth. All right? We had a quick one. Go ahead, brother. Uh, uh, Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And again, he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Not everybody's going to receive this. And this is man, this is only for the hopeful elect at the end of the day. But, you know, Israelite, this Israelite's all out there, man. This Israelite's every aspect of the sports world, the entertainment world, they know they're Israelites. But they ain't of the elect. And being just an Israelite ain't gonna cut it, man. Because two thirds of those people gonna die over here. Hell, they can't die in the world. And one more thing, too. Uh, the, hell, they can't admit that they're Israelite. Because if they do, they, they lose all, all, yeah, everything yeah, that yeah, they yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know that, you know, that goal. You know, these rappers have tried that. These rappers have tried to come out and say they're Israelites and they, they try to say that they, they know the truth. But what happens? They get a stern talking to from their handlers. Yeah. And then they, they either stop talking about it altogether or yep. change their picture. Look at, look at Nick Cannon, right? Yep. Look at Nick Cannon. He was all for the Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jews. Yeah. Nigga, don't you know they signed your paycheck? Mm. <laughs> that nigga, next thing you know, he on only six and Yeah, I want to apologize to the rabbi. I want to apologize, you know. I was, my ignorance, all this bullshit, man. Yep. You know, this, that was the handlers. Because now, Nick Cannon was worth, you know, hundred million, uh, you know, I say three, four, five million worth, nine, three, nine. four, five million dollars. He's worth more now. Of course he is. Of course he is. Way more now. Because, because you gotta understand, Esau's not stupid, man. Right. He'll take Jake because he knows that Jake can influence Jake by putting Jake. Even these rappers, they're the ones who come out to the masses. You don't see Esau in the corners in the rap in the rap studio bringing these raps. In. That's all Jake going to Jake, man. So they, they told Nick, you track what you said. We'll give you a nice hefty bonus. You know, put you in the you know put you in the ten million range. You can live happily ever after. He sold his man. Right. Yeah, let's get on. Have a quick finish off on that. Come on. Um, it says but it says but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Right. right. It will not tarry. <laughs> wait for it. It's going to come, man. We've been telling you these things going to come. You know, people say, what? Not in this lifetime. It's coming. This is the lifetime. Hold on, let me let the elder finish on his real quick. Uh, this is a precept. This is a first Thessalonians 5 and 1. It says, but of the times, it's a season, it's a season, it's a season it's brother, you have no need that I write unto you for yourselves so perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Right, a lot of people are expecting to see some great, you know, uh, have some great uh, 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 message to be dead to, oh, it's coming tomorrow, so you better, you know, no, oh, the Lord said he's gonna come as a thief in the night, man. That's why you gotta pray without ceasing. You gotta constantly be watching. Now, if we, if we knew when the Lord was coming, why would we have to watch? Mm -hmm. You know, why is he coming, you know, uh, December 23rd, 2024, that's when he's coming, you know? But there would be no need to watch. You know, but that's why the son said, he coming at a thief in the night. You never know when a thief's coming to break into your car. You never know when a thief's coming to break into the bank. You don't know. So this is why you gotta stay diligent, man. Stay fervent. All right, go ahead. You got any more on that? Go ahead. This uh, verse three, it says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, yep. as travail upon a woman with child, right. and they shall not escape. Right. Now, Donald Trump, he's going to try to rein in peace and safety to Babylon the Great. Columbia, Kamala Harris is going to try to rein in peace and safety in the, in, the, in the Americas, if you will. 
right? But the scripture says, when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction is going to be on them, right? And we're right at that moment, right? We're right in the time of sudden destruction, man. Right? We're right in that time period. Because what are, what are, they, what are they trying to do? To the, they're trying to win the American people over by telling them, if you elect me into office, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to get the jobs. I'm going to bring the people home from war, all this bullshit. Buddy. And when you really think about, and I'll say this on the side, when you really think about this whole election process, you know, in the electoral college, when you think about that, the popular vote is just what it is. It's the popular vote. When you vote for a state senator or a state representative, they end up being the part of the electoral college. They're the ones, they'll listen to you. Oh, who, this is what you pick? Then I'm going to use your vote and say, okay, I'm not, I'm going to represent your vote because I'm on the electoral college. Or they can say, yeah, you got it wrong. We're going to go with this. So the American people truly have no say in what goes on as far as this president is, is, is concerned. No say whatsoever. But at the same time, because the way they have established this thing, you know how many people don't even know about an electoral college? They got no goddamn clue. They just think, oh, I'm voting. But it's who you vote for in this small town that's going to go and vote in the big town, so to say, for who the president is. Hillary, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. Yeah, right. she did. Al Gore. Al Gore. Hillary, Hillary Clinton. They won, they won by landslide. I'm, I'm talking a super landslide. But the electoral, the, but the electoral yeah, voters didn't feel the same way. We understand you. This is what you people want. Yeah. This is what we want. Yeah. You see? I was reading. Go ahead, brother. I, I'm, 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 I'm oh, going to cut you off. I was about to say, remember, yeah. Al Gore actually won. He won and the then they, then they retract their statement. Yeah. All know Bush won. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Jed Bush, because it came down to Florida. Mm -hmm. Jed Bush was the governor of Florida. <laughs> when they said Florida was won by the Democrats, then they had to recount or whatever. Oh, there was a mistake. We made a mistake. Yeah. Oh, for, for, for the, the, the winner was George Bush. Of course, again, you see how that works. See George George was sitting there laughing the whole time. Because mm -hmm. Al Gore was up the whole time. They showed an uh, yep. uh, uh, image of George at the house. He yep. started laughing. Yep. He knew he was going to be president. <laughs> but what did they do, though? Who did they turn to? Who did they turn to who tried to make the most noise? The black folks. Yep. They made all kinds of protests. And you didn't see Esau protesting. It was all the black folks. We want our voices heard. We, this is not, this is yeah. a travesty. It don't matter. You, this is what you people don't understand. It doesn't matter what you feel or what you think. You're insignificant in this kingdom. This kingdom belongs to Esau Edom, man. Your vote, your your voice does not matter out here. Man. Now, you know? I, was, I was reading this article some time ago. I was, I was going back and forth with these, uh, these guys at the job. This is some, some years ago. And uh, I found this article. It was, it was talking about the Electoral College. And, and uh, this is the real reason why the Civil War was fought. They'll tell you today that the Civil War was fought to free the slaves. But it was uh, because the, the Electoral College is based on uh, populace, like how, how many people you have in your state. Yep. So the people that have more uh, people in their state get more state representatives in the Electoral College. Right? And so the southern states, of course, were using their slaves as the part of their population, which allowed them to have uh, uh, more, more electoral, electoral college votes. If you look at the first handful of presidents, they were all Southern, uh, uh, southern uh, government officials that were being elected because they were, they were winning by a landslide because they had so many electoral college votes. So to make it, to make it even, or, or, or before, they, before they came up with a way to make it even, they fought a war, the Civil War. Uh, the, because what was happening was, and this is this is why I don't get uh, not anymore. There was a time where I was so enthralled by the idea of, of, of a Harriet Tubman. Oh yeah, but really, she was a she was a uh, like an industry plant. She was yeah. an agent who was who was taking the Negroes Slave. from the southern states and, and, and transferring them to the northern states yeah. for that very reason, so that yeah. they can increase their population. Right. Exactly. And this is why this is why uh, slave catching was a was big thing. <laughs> why uh, the Civil War was fought, right? So they can have a, a, a balance of, of electoral college votes. And then you have uh, what they call the, uh, the Three-Fifths Compromise. So the Three-Fifths Compromise was, you know, as, as we know, in the Constitution, black people are three-fifths of a man. But it's, it was just to make it even because the Southern states were, had so many uh, people because of slavery. You got a question? 
Thank you. Sorry. No, go ahead. No worries. 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 Without freeing the slaves, he wouldn't do it. Yep. Right. So yep. that whole fight was a fight over electoral college votes and, and having a balance of who they were able to put in office. And after that, the three fifths compromise and all of that stuff, and you've seen more northern uh, representatives uh, in the presidency. Yep. Right. Let me say this too, going back on that. Um, I believe there's roughly 530, 530 electoral college members. People should understand this. When you get down to the race, right, I think they need 270 to win the election, right? Ask yourself, you got millions of people out there. Why is it only 270 to win the election? Oh, exactly. See? That's a so nobody, nobody, nobody put the oh, pieces man. of this jigsaw puzzle together. They need 270 to win the, the presidency, right? So you have, let's say the state of Georgia has, let's say it has, you know, 18,000 rough number, 18,000 members. Or voters, I should say. You mean to tell me if the president needs 270 votes to win, and Georgia has 18,000 voters, and everybody, and it's a, let's say it's a red state, a blue state, yeah. they should, that just Georgia alone should be able to put the president right through, right? But if people ain't thinking about the numbers, the dynamics of how this is, that just goes to show you your personal vote don't mean a goddamn thing. Which yeah. proves that this is not a democracy. That's right. <laughs> hey, Dr. Umar, you think that? I saw that this morning. Yeah, yeah, I saw that this morning. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's funny because I was, I was saying, like, man, I was just watching this video this morning on the way up there. But go ahead, bro. But yeah, yeah, but like, one care. thing that he said that I like, he said that um, doc, democracy is the illusion of the illusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and, and that's what they spread into the four winds of the earth. What's yeah. this we were watching? Were y'all watching? No, I, he he saw he probably saw the whole video. I just saw a clip of the video. Yeah, the so what what Dr. Umar was saying, he was he was telling you the difference between a, a democracy and a republic. Yeah. Whereas a, a democracy, as as you know, the Apostle Bar brought it out years ago, that it means uh, of the people, people's right. But it's really not a democracy; it's a republic, which means of the law. Right. So they're they're not run by the people; it's run yeah. by by the, the laws that they right, that right. they administer. Right. The people don't run it, and it goes back to their pledge of allegiance yep. to the republic for which it stands. That right there tells you yeah. it's a republic. One nation, it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nation of law that is ruled by not the people. Now the people have now honestly, the people should have the right to overthrow whatever the government puts in place. The people can veto that. Like, nah, we don't want that. We the people don't want that. It has not become we the people. It's now the eye of the government, the law says, you know? And this is the I know we're getting, we're getting, you know, going into the... No, we, we give it all up. This whole, this whole thing of the, between uh, Democrats and Republicans or Kamala and Trump. Yes, like you, 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 you would want to, if you were into the, if you were, if this, let's say, was an honest government since you don't want to be a Republican. Because what, what Kamala and the Democrats are, are proposing is that we have more government control over the people, right? Less 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 sovereignty to the to the, the citizen and more government control, right? Which means that they can do whatever they want to, right? This is why I, I, I personally believe that Kamala is, is gonna win. Now they they you know there's people that think Trump is gonna win, which is fine. But I personally believe that Kamala is going to win because how, how, else, back, brother, how else back, can you implement the the, the C hit or the or the, or the MOTB mm. unless the government has complete dom uh, dominance and control over the people, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I have Isaiah 10 and 1. Yep. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees yep. that have right yep. grievances when yep. they are prescribed. Yep. And, this is, and this, is how they, this is how they get down, man. They write their laws, they write their uh, 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 penal codes, mm -hmm. right? They write their amendments and their constitutions and all of these different things. It's really the state of the people. Yeah, just to back you up, uh, yep. the, the, the amendment is not, got, it's not uh, from the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. They made up their own amendment. Well, yeah, but so, so what's beautiful about what you said, the men means to change or to add, right? The scriptures tell us that you can't change and add the scriptures, right? The Heavenly Father made his laws perfect. So if you really want to govern your, your society or your country or your state, then you should do so by the laws of the scriptures. What, what would be the need to change 
those law statutes commitments, right? There was there was a time where uh, adultery adultery should be illegal. Right. Adult you should you should the description say you should be killed for it, right? But you won't even do jail time. If you if you if you go to prison, I'm sorry, if you go to court and you tell the judge, hey my wife had an affair, right? All you get is a divorce. Like really, she should be put in prison. She should be put in prison. Right. You, you get a you get a divorce, yeah. and now you can you lose your children. Yeah. Because of her, now you got to pay all kinds of child support, and now you got to be on a schedule to see your kids. Well, she was the one that was straight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she should be you know as the law of the, of the law of the Lord. She should be you know on the live at that point. But at that time, even 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 in Esau's kingdom, they should give you the kids. Give the kids to the father. If this yeah. woman steps out and decides she's gonna go cheat. Now she's gonna go cheat. Now bring your kids around this demon who cheated with her. And now you gotta be on a schedule to see your own shit. And this nigga's tucking them in the bed at night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw this video this morning, right? This demon, he said he was he was he was sleeping on the floor in his living room. And one day he was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not doing this no more. So he got up and went to the room with his wife and told him. He says, he said, I'm not sleeping on the floor anymore. He said, look, if you don't want to be around me, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not sleeping on the floor of my own house. I bought the house, I paid the bills here, I'm not sleeping on the floor. So in the documents, when she went to court, the court, the court for the divorce, she said they, they said that um it was it was rape because he didn't understand her personal boundaries. Right? Second thing that happened to this guy, right? This and this dude is telling his story, he's in tears, man. He said um he, he, she, she told her, she told her husband to, you know, to give the baby a bath, right? Which I don't know why he had to get in the tub with the baby to give the baby a bath, but you know that's neither here nor there. But he happened to be in the tub with the baby giving the baby a bath, and so she hadn't been touching him for months, like no, no sexual contact, all these different things, and so she comes into the bathroom with a, a, a negligee on and starts teasing him. Oh, you, you know, you want some of this, or blah, blah, blah. So he was like, hey, look, the baby's right here. You gotta take the baby and put the baby in the bed. He reads the documents. She said that he was in the tub with the baby and had an erection, so he made me take the baby because he was getting turned on by the oh, baby. Man. <laughs> so, 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 this is, a, this, this place is wicked, man. Yeah. Yeah. That, that should, that should never fly. You, you, there was no due process. There was no, uh, no combing through the evidence and none of that. This man, just because this woman said it, was now a, a rapist and a pedophile because a woman said it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, the Most High said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Yep. But that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth, yep. seeing thou hate, hate, hatest instruction yep. and casteth my words yep. behind thee. They hateth instruction, right? The, the Heavenly Father gave us the rules and regulations for us to live by. And those are the things that we should live by. But nobody wants to follow the rules and regulations of the Heavenly Father because they want to do the wicked thing. They want to do the thing that's on the left hand side, right? Come on, this is the book of Sirach 10 and 1. It says, A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is yeah. well ordered. Yeah, a wise judge will instruct his people, right? What do you, how, do you, how do you, how do you, what, let's say it this way, what better way? to instruct your people, but by the ways of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. That's the, that's the best way to do it. If this is the Heavenly Father, uh, uh, this is the, the, the person who created everything on earth, wouldn't he know the best way to deal with it? Right. Right, so you go by what he says. What did he say, right? When you go through, when you go through uh, Exodus and, all, and read all those laws, when you go through Leviticus and read all those laws, they're fair. Look, don't take nothing from nobody, right? Don't, don't try to lay with his wife, right? Have your own things. Don't don't cover somebody else's thing, right? It's all it's all about being fair and equitable, right? And they, this this place is not fair and equitable because their their intent is not to be, well, let's say, a, a, a proper government. Their intent is to keep the nation of Israel in slavery. That's the that's the that's their main concern. So the laws and regulations are built around them, right? As long as we can keep the nation of Israel in slavery and keep them, let's say descended from the Heavenly Father, we don't, I don't care what you do. make the laws, make the laws however you want. But if, I mean, we need to keep the children of Israel out of remembrance from being those people, go ahead. Uh, this is, uh, this is back up on what you were saying. Yeah. This is Judah chapter five, verse 20, and it reads, now therefore my Lord and governor, yep. Yep. if there be any error against his people, yep. and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Yeah, right, so, so that's, their, that's their main idea, right? 
they go into these records in history, right? They go into these biblical records and say, okay, when did the nation that was in power have the most success against the children of Israel? And then they compiled all those things together. Well, this, well, this nation was making them. Let's go, let's go to, uh, to go to uh, First Maccabees uh, one. And you can start at like thirty-two or thirty-three. Read, read verse seven first, or was around seven. Where it says, uh, "He was a multiplied in the earth." Oh, no. Did I? Yeah. I'm missing. Uh, first Maccabees 1 and 9. Yep, yep. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. Yep. So did their sons after them many years. Mm -hmm. And evils mu were multiplied in the earth. Right, so evils were multiplied in the earth. This is you can you can argue that this that this time was the first Edomite stronghold, right? Yeah. That Alexander was like the first Edomite to really take over the whole known world. Before that, it was all the dark nations so-called, right? Cyrus, Darius, uh, uh uh, Nebuchadnezzar, all of these different uh, world powers at the time, they were all the dark nations, right? Alexander was the first of his kind in that he, it was an Edomite that was in control or in power over the whole known world. And what happened? Evils were multiplied in the world. So they, they document these things, right? Now go back down to um, uh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 12 years. And 12 years, real quick too, right? Took over real quick and, and real powerful, but to show you that Esau is a, a, a wicked power, they was fighting each other. This guy, Cassander, Lysimaeus, uh, Ptolemy, and Seleucus, they was fighting each other. Yeah, here, here it is, you got, you got your, your main man, Alexander, gave you all of this land, look, just divvy it up. But they was fighting each other. This is why you had, uh, it ended up being, you had uh, the Seleucid Empire to the Northeast, and uh, the Ptolemaic power to the, to, the, to the Southwest, right? The reason why you had that is because they were, they were fighting over who had what land or who had what territory, right? And so, go ahead. No, but they did, they did it again as the Spanish, the French, the British. Yep, they did it again. yep, same, same difference, right? Same difference right now. And so this is this is what's so heavy about the scripture, right? Because now America is all of them, right? It's just, it's the, they're the Greeks, they're the, they're the Spaniards, they're the French, they're the English, and they're all now here ruling out of the so-called so America, right? This is powerful, man. The scriptures are alive. The scriptures are alive and well. Um, yeah, to 32, yeah. Because this is, this is, these are the things that they did, right? Um, I, I always like to say, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah, so I, I always like to say, hey, that's what it looks like. So I always like to say, that America is the envisionment of, of Antiochus. Antiochus had a dream. Look, let them leave, leave from off your laws and follow my laws, follow my ways, right? So America is the example of that. They all be one people, all speak one language. America is Antiochus' dream coming into fruition. First Maccabees one and uh, thirty two. But the women and children took their captive and possessed the cattle. Yep. They built it. Uh, then built the day the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made it strong a strong made it a stronghold for them and they and they put there in a sinful nation wicked men and fortified themselves therein they stored it also uh, they stored it also with armor and victuals and when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem they laid them uh, up there, yep. and so they became a sore snare. Right, right. So they, now they're taking our land, right? Taking the land of Israel, they're making it a stronghold for them, right? Putting uh, it's like a, made it like a let's say a, 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 a epicenter for them, a base. Where they got they got food there now. They got they they setting up the military there because really 
really, if you if you look at the, the nation of Israel, it's the center of all the, of the whole world, right? It's the center of the whole world. All roads lead to Israel, right? They can, you can, they can get to any continent by land. They can get to any continent by water, right? So Israel is the place. So if you got control over that place, you you are in a, you are in a good position to be in control over the whole world. And this is why they're fighting over that land now. Go ahead, bro. Uh, verse 36, for it was a place to lie yep. and wait against the sanctuary yep. and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus, they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it, in so much that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them. Yep, so this is this was a part of uh, uh, the reason for the, <laughs> the, 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 the diaspora or diaspora happened long before this happened, right? But this was another, uh, let's say, stanchion of it or another part of that our people leaving the land and going to other places, right? And why would they, why would they, let's say it this way, how would they know that they can go to these other places? Probably because they have family in these other places, right? My, my, my grandmother's sister uh, went to, uh, let's say, Elam uh, years and years and years ago. So I know I got people over there, so I'm gonna go over there. I can't take what's going on in Israel. Matter of fact, when you go into uh, the, a little bit of the more the history, um, uh, like Mattathias and his sons, they were in Modin, right? Which is it's a, it's a little further outside of Israel, right? And when they came back, this is what Mattathias was like, oh, look, 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 uh, second chapter. First Maccabees 2 and 1. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, yep. the son of Simeon, yep. uh, the priest of the sons of jo Joram, yep. and uh, from Jerusalem and dwelt in Modin. Right, so he dwelt in Modin, right? So when he came back and seen all was going on in his in the capital city, he said, "Man, it's it's, it's messed up down here." And he and it and it enraged him. So he he and he killed he killed uh, he killed somebody that was on the altar. All right, let's go back to the first verse. I just wanted to get that one. Uh, I left off at verse uh, 30, 38. Uh, first Maccabees 1 and every 37. Mm -hmm. uh, Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it, yep. and so much that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them. Yep. Whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers yep. and became strange to those that were born in her, yep. and her own children left her. Yep. So, so now you got this, this change that's happening in Israel, right? Now that the, the wickedness is being, uh, let's say, multiplied in the earth, right? We had this change going on in the nation of Israel, in our country, in our land, where now it's, 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 it's foreign to them. So now they're trying to get out of there. There's a lot of wickedness going on, right? Keep going. Mm. He wasn't even in there. He was trying to tell them how it went. Esau. 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 That's eat him over there. He, he got a dog with him and everything. Yeah, eat him. <laughs> he, he, he pointing around. He don't know what the hell happened. He wasn't even here. He's telling the dude to move. Yeah, Verse 39, her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning, her Sabbaths into, into reproach, her honor into hey, contempt. Hey, it's Babylon. <laughs> this is Babylon, right? What does Babylon mean? He's a fugitive, right? You got somebody that wasn't even here trying to tell people what they should be doing. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. I'm trying, to, I'm trying not to pay attention to it. I keep looking up here. Go ahead, bro. Uh, verse 40. As had been her glory. Look, look at, look at, look at. This is, this is a crazy world. Why, did, why is she recording that? Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, as had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Yep. Mo yeah, keep going. Uh, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his people, yep. he wrote to his whole kingdom, yep. that all should be one people. Yep. That all should be one people, right? So this is what they did here. 
hope that, 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 that they should all be one people. But let's let's get into some specifics here. Go ahead. No, verse 42, and everyone should leave his laws. That's it. So all the heathen agreed according right. to the commandment of the king. So America is a, a picture of that, man. It is the, it is his dream coming to full fruition. No one speaks Hebrew anymore. We we try to learn it as best we can. But we, don't, we don't speak our languages anymore. We don't follow our laws anymore. We don't, we don't, we don't speak Hebrew, we don't follow our laws anymore because we're here in America, man. Yeah, yeah, keep going, brother. Keep going, brother. Uh, verse 43. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Yeah. Uh, yep. For the... But that's our and, not, and that's our people, right? Our people are now uh, profaning the Sabbath, right? Right? They're not keeping our law, statutes, and commandments. Are we all too close? Uh, verse uh, forty-four: For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the city of Judea uh, that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid. Her offerings and sacrifice yep. and yep. drink offerings, offerings yep. in the temple, yep. and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. Right. So you think you think that this was just by chance that Antiochus just made that kind of decision by chance? No, he read in Judith. He read in Judith. He, he, whatever Achior said resonated with him. I might have to do that because if they have a good relationship, this ain't gonna work, right? They have, if they're in good with the Heavenly Father, then what happened? What happened? You had Mattathias raise up and reestablish the relationship between the nation of Israel and the Heavenly Father, and they had a lot of success for many years. The Hasmonean dynasty happened for lasted for a long time, up until you started getting up into the time of the Lord Yahweh Shai when they started, you know, being they got let's say let me say it right, they uh they started getting their authority from the Roman power, and once they did that, then that's that whole that whole priesthood that came from Mattathias. Uh, got changed up, man. Got changed up. But this again, this is this is this, is, uh, this America here is Antiochus' dream coming into fruition. Right, right. Uh, verse forty-six and polluted the sanctuary and holy people. They set up altars and groves and yep. chapels of idols yep. and sacrificed swine's flesh yep. and unclean beasts. Yep. And now, now our people they are willing. To, they don't. They can't have a slice of pizza. So they don't have uh, pepperoni. Right? Yeah, bacon, sausage, right? What's wrong with a plain slice of cheese? Plain slice of cheese, pretty good. You know, they gotta have bacon on it. Yeah, yeah. You got all of, got all of it. bacon, pepperoni, sausage. Yeah, man. All of it all in one slice, man. Now our people willingly do those things because they've been in this captivity. But again, Antiochus did this because they understand what the history says. So now America is is further perpetuating it because. They, they know, look, if they if they got a good relationship with the Heavenly Father, if they're keeping those laws set to the end, the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father, he's, That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. Can you, can you go? Can you go back to Judith, the fifth chapter? And go up. Go up to the. Go up to the first verse. <coughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. They gonna go to. The, I got it all on tape, sir. I was there. We're getting started from 3:30, 4 o'clock. I was watching a guy. I saw the guy. He was being belligerent, so I, uh, I had to take my phone out there. <laughs> this is Judah chapter 5 verse 1 and it reads yeah. Then was it declared to Holophanes the captain the chief captain of yep. the army of Ashur yep. that the children of Israel have prepared for war. Yeah, so so Holophanes was going around like Beanie Siegel, you know, you, you, you get down and lay down, right? And all, everybody was kind of like giving in. So when they got to Israel, Israel was, you know, preparing themselves or let's say preparing ourselves for war. Right? Holophanes was offended. Hold on. Who are these people? Do they got a military over there? Like, what, why are they so confident and not just coming to me like everybody else did? Keep going. And it says, 
and had shut up the passage of the hill country mm -hmm. and had for, for, uh, fortified all the tops right. of the hills. Right. So, so when you look at when you look at uh, Jerusalem, right? Jerusalem is is set. There's there's like uh, three main mount, mountain types. You had Mount Moriah, which was where the uh, the temple was, and then across the Kidron Valley. Um, I forget which one is across the Kidron Valley. Then uh, west of that is another mountaintop. So it, it's, it was the hill country, right? This is where down in the, uh, near the city of Jerusalem where all of those hills were. So they were basically cutting off all the passageways to get up to the to the top of the hill, right? Go ahead. It says, and had laid impediments in the campaign yep. countries yep. Yep. wherewith he was very angry and called all the prince of Moab yep. and the captains of Ammon. Right, so, so Moab is to uh, the east of, of Israel, right? So you had, you had, he was like, look, man, go get them Moabites, man. They, they done submitted to us. Go get them Moabites and figure out who, the, who these people are, you know, setting up against us. Who is this, right? Keep going. It says, and all the governors of the sea coast. Yep. And he said unto them, tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, who this people is yep. that dwelleth in the hill country. Yeah. Go ahead, keep going. And what are the cities that they inhabit? And what is the multitude of their army? And wherein is their power and strength? Yeah. And what king is set hey, over them? They got, a, they got a king over there. They got some military power over there. What, they, what kind of weapons they got over there? Oh, tell me, tell me about them, guy. Who, who are these people? Go ahead. It says, or, or captain of their army. Yeah. And why have they determined not to come and meet me? Yeah. Everybody else did. Everybody else done laid down to me. What, what, what is it about these people where they're rebelling against me? Go ahead. It says, Everything good? yeah, 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 yeah. It reads, more than all the inhabitants of the West. Right. Every, all them, all, I mean, how is they more brave than everybody else in the West? I done went over there and he kicked everybody's ass. He only had to fight uh, one time. And everybody's like, all right, hey, look, we're going to bow to you. We good. We good with the king. Right? Go ahead. It says, then said Achior, the captain of all the yeah. sons of Ammon, yeah. let my country now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant, yeah. and I will declare unto thee the truth concerning this people, yeah. which dwelleth near thee, and inhabit the hill countries, and there shall no lie come out of the mouth of thy yeah. servant. Yeah. So Halophanes, uh, not Halophanes, but uh, Achior was getting ready to break it down to him, right? He said, look, he said, look, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't, don't hold it against me. I'm going to tell you the truth. About these people over there, right? Keep going. It says, "This people are descendants of the Chaldeans, yeah. and they sojourn here too for in Mesopotamia yeah. because they why, would." Why did he say these people are descendants of the Chaldeans? Anybody know? Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. What's that? Amen. Amen. Abraham's Abraham was uh, from from Ur, Ur of the Chaldeans, right? And, they, and he went and he went west to north, north of our land, right? It says on it reads, and they sojourn here to fall in Mesopotamia yeah. because they would not follow the powers of their father, yeah. which were in the land of the Chaldea. Yeah. For they left the way of their ancestors and worshiped the Most High of yeah. heaven yeah. and the Most High whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their powers, yep. and they flee into Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia yep. and sojourn there many days. Yep. Then, their, then their power commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned, yep. and go into the land of Canaan, yep. where they dwelt, and were increased with gold and silver, yep. and with very much cattle. Yep. But when famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there, yeah. while they were nourished and became it became there a great multitude, yeah. so that one could not number their nation. Yeah. Therefore, the king. So, so, so he's so Achior is, is is given the history, right? And how and how through through our father, our forefather Abraham, there was a pact made, right? There was an agreement made between Abraham and the heavenly Father, that really is what uh, 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 let's say established the relationship between Abraham our forefather and the Heavenly Father. It was that that pact was made and then that pact and that promise went from Abraham to Isaac and of course Isaac to Jacob and then Jacob to the twelve patriarchs. You know it says, uh, therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them yep. and dealt subtly with them and yep. brought them low with laboring of the bricks yep. and made them slaves. And now he's telling them, he said, look, the, the first nation to really 
put their hands on them, it was Egypt, right? They made them slaves, made them work, just this laborious work, right? Go ahead, keep on. It says, then they cried unto their power. Right, right, and they cried unto their power, right? So when we was in Egypt, right, we was like, man, this is bullshit, man, all this. You know, I was, I was watching, uh, this is a, a couple months ago, I was watching a little clip of uh, that movie, The Ten Commandments with uh, Charlton Heston. <laughs> and they had him down in the uh, in the pit, and they was making the um, the bricks, and they was they dumped the hay down in there, and they jumped down on the on the hay to make the uh, the mortar the mortar for the bricks. Right, keep going. It says, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. Yep. So the Egyptian he cast said, them said, out of the sight. He said, look, when they, they was over there in Egypt. The heavenly Father cast some plagues over there. They, they, Egypt was never able to bounce back from it. Right, keep going. It says. So he giving them, he giving them the rundown, he giving them the breakdown. Right, keep right. going. It says, and the Most High dried the Red Sea before them, and he brought them to Mount Sinai, and and cast his barns, and cast for all that dwell in the wilderness. Yeah. So they dwell in the land of Amorites, and they destroyed, and they destroyed by their strength all them of Esbon by passing. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, verse 15, Judah 5 15, so they dwelt in the land of Amorites, and they destroyed by their strength all them of Esbon, and passing over Jordan, they possess all the hill countries. Yeah, they, they possess all the hill countries, so as they pass over the Jordan, as we know, as the story goes, right, the Heavenly Father started divvying the land to the children of Israel, all right, you know, this, this, this tribe gets this land, this tri tribe gets that land, right, so forth and so on. They started to inhabit the hill country, right? It says, and they cast forth before them the Canaanites, yeah. the Perizzites, yeah. the Jebusites, yeah. and the Shechemites. Right, so he, he, he telling them, look, they came out of Egypt, they was in captivity in Egypt. And when they got to where they was getting, they cast out the people that was established in that land. Right? So he's, 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 he's giving them a, a background here. Right? Go ahead. It says, and all the Gergesites, and yep. they dwell in that country many days. Yep. And while it's, while it's they sin not before their power, yep. they prosper. Right. While they sin not before their power, they prosper. Right? You don't think Antiochus knew that? Even though this happened, even though this account here in Judah happened hundreds of years before Antiochus came around, you don't think they understood the records? Because their, what's, their, what's their goal is world domination, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't think they study how to, to be in dominance? Yeah. You don't think they understand what they need to do to take down these people and to rule the world? Because whoever has control and power over the nation of Israel has always had control and power over the rest of the world, right? Yep. So you don't um, think that they know this? Keep going. It says, uh, it says, uh, while they sin not before their power, they yep. prosper yep. because the Most High had hated iniquity. <laughs> was with them, yep. but when they departed from the way right. which he appointed them, right. they were destroyed in right. many battles right. and very sore. Right. So anytime we turned against the Heavenly Father, we were destroyed. That's where you where, uh, uh, insert the Book of Judges, right? That you had you had all of these different nations that came against us and, and took us down, right? And then the Heavenly Father had to raise up a judge, and then the judge took down that so-called power or that nation, and then we, all, all the days of that judge's life, we did the right thing, and then when that judge passed on, then we, you know, slowly went back into wickedness again, and it was just this cycle over and over again, right? Keep going. It says, and were led captive into a land yep. that was not theirs, yep. and the temple of their power was cast to the ground, yep. and the cities were taken by the enemies. Yep. And, and, it ha and, it, and it ha and it's still happening. They have a they have what they call the Ark of Titus, right? And on the Ark of Titus, there's pictures of them ransacking the temple. Man. You know, keep going. It says, but now they are returned to their power and are come up from the places where Judith. they were scattered Judith, the fifth chapter. and have possessed Jerusalem yep. where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill country. Yep. So now now they back good with the Heavenly Father, right? Mm -hmm. They back good, right? And they've reestablished that hill country. Keep going. For it was desolate. Mm -hmm. uh, now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error against this people, yep. And they sin against their power. Right. That's the only way you can take them down. Is if they sin against their power. Right? 
That's the only way you will be able to fight this people. And he gave him the run now. He said, look, he was in Egypt. He came out of Egypt. They, all the land of the Amorites was destroyed. The Canaanites that was there before them, they got destroyed. When they had a good relationship with their father. And you, Holofernes ends up killing them, right? So you know, Ahab was like, look, man, I'm telling you. And Holofernes is looking at him like, whoo, they killed this dude, man. We going, we going up in there. Go ahead. It says, uh, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, yep. and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Yep, yep. So now look, if they sin, we got them. If they're in there committing wickedness, we can get them. You don't think Antiochus knew this story? Of course, it's a record. Right. It's a record. You don't think they go into the records and figure how do you, how do you think that they were able we were able to rebuild the the, uh, the temple in the time of Ezra? They had to go back and get the letters of, uh, from Cyrus that gave them the permission to do it, right? So th those records don't go away. They, they, they're, they're maintained and they're kept. So when Antiochus came into power, you don't think he knew about that? You don't, you don't think he knew about what was going on? You don't think they read this history? This is why we've been able to be, uh, let's say, held in this captivity for so long. Because not only now, but there was a time where we were in captivity, we still knew it was we were going off. But we knew we were Israelites. Now in this time, not only are we going off, but we don't even know what our nationality is. Exactly. We, our people don't our, don't know that they're the descendants of the people that walked across the Red Sea. They don't know that they had a, 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 a kingdom or, or their own land. You got Jacob always talking about we need our own land. We need to we need to do our own farming. You know, it's you know we 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 did it. We came together before at Black Wall Street, brother. And they they talk all of this stuff, but they don't know that, that we had that. A, a long time ago, man. And the only way we can have it and it not be bothered or not be taken from us is if we have a good relationship with the Heavenly Father. So go ahead, bro. Hit me. Uh, Joshua 1 and 8. Uh, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, yep. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, yep. that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Yep. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, right. and then thou shalt have good success. Right. That's how you have uh, prosperity. That's how you have success. I argue with people on the internet all the time. It's, 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 a, it's a good thought. Our people coming together, our people having land, our people have, we got a, the, the black dollar got to circulate. It only circulate for nine hours. And then that, that's all, all of those things are good things to say. But why is it being taken from us? That's the question that needs to be asked. Why can't we have success in, uh, in, in the economy or in economics or in, or in medicine or whatever it is? We can't have success because we don't have a relationship with the Heavenly Father. That's first. Look, the first commandment is what? Worship the Heavenly Father and put no God before him, right? So how, how can you have a prosperous nation, a prosperous society to live in if you don't know the Heavenly Father? Exactly. We, we, we're trying to reestablish the relationship with the Heavenly Father. Go ahead. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Yep. If my people which are called by my name yep. shall humble themselves yep. and pray and seek my face yep. and turn from their wicked ways, yep. then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin yep. and will forgive yep. uh, and will heal their land. Yep. And in another place, it talks about us acknowledging our offense, yeah. right? And so when, when we start to do that, which is what, this is why people, don't, don't allow yourself or allow a demon to get in your head to say that this work is, is nothing, it's meaningless. This is, this is, you can look at this as the altar that your turtle dove got sacrificed on. You can look at this as the altar that your bullock got sacrificed on. And where's the sacrifice? You. You're the sacrifice now. Like the scriptures say, that you make your bodies a living sacrifice, right? That's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're making our bodies a living sacrifice. All of these camps across the country and across the world are little altars that are that are being sacrificed upon, right? And so, and so, this is us trying to reestablish that relationship with the Heavenly Father. We don't have lambs and bullocks anymore. Mm -hmm. So that we, that we can sacrifice and apologize to the Heavenly Father. So now our apology has to be in, from our mouth, of course, still, but now we're the sacrifice, right? Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, continuing, it says, uh, verse 21. Yep. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, yep. let my Lord now pass by, yep. least their least their Lord defend them, yep. and their power yep. be for them, yep. and we become a who, reproach. Who is that we read? It's, uh, it's in 2 Kings. Uh, was that 6? 6 chapter. Yeah, 6th chapter. Somebody pull that up for me. 
right? Because because that that we we have a we have a galactic military, right? Jake Jake doesn't understand that in order to have a land, you got to have a way to defend the land. You can't just have land, or you can't just have uh, uh, banks, or you can't just have hospitals. And it and it because what what the, what the world on, is man. competitive. Right, and so what do what do you see all happening in the world? There's wars. I want that land, so we fight over it, right? So, and how are you gonna have a land that you say is yours and you don't have a way to fight for it? Our defense has always been our shot. That has always been our defense system, right? That has always been our military, right? The way we've been able to win wars with small numbers of people is because of the spirit and power of Bashim Yahweh Shah. So this, that's no different today. So if we if we have the first establish a relationship with the Heavenly Father. And then you can talk about being put in your own land, but the Heavenly Father is going to put us in that land. And, that, and what the Heavenly Father has sown, let no man put us under. Right? Go ahead. And a real quick too. And that's why Esau is so afraid. That's why I tried as hard as I can to get Israel from being distracted yep. from, from following after the Heavenly Father. Yep. You know, just like the, the guy in Judah. He said the only way we have a chance of Beating Israel yep. is to get them to continue to turn yep. away from, 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 yep. from their Lord. Yep. You know, yep. and that's and that's and that's the only way they can take us down. Man. This is why don't don't again don't allow the demons to get on you and say that this is unimportant. This is important work that we do. Right. Go ahead, bro. Come on, you're not a scripture. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you find it? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me get this one real quick, brother. Second uh, Kings, six and sixteen. Yeah. And he answered. Fear not, for they that be with us yep. are more than they that be with them. All right. So we, we got a we got a, a, a military on high. Right. right? Uh, yeah. Our military is up there in the heavens. They got chariots and lasers. Right? We can put a measly bullet down here. The Lord the Lord got lasers, man. Verse 17. Yeah. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee. Open his eyes yep. that he may see. Yep. And the Lord opened his eyes, yep. and the man opened the eyes of the young man, yep. and he saw. And behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots yep. of fire yep. round about Elisha. Yep. So you saw all them chariots up there on the mountains. Yes. 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 Yeah. We don't gotta worry about these people that are coming towards us. We got that we got that galactic power yep. and heavenly power. Oh yeah. Right? <laughs> so this this is this is what we're trying to do, man. We're trying to, we're trying to, let's say, invest, like the scriptures say, in the in the in the in a spiritual bank account. You know, right. we're trying to invest so that we can be defended, man. Right? And I was I was listening to uh, this video this morning. It was an ex a ex uh, a Navy SEAL, I think it was, and he was saying that people don't realize the 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 turmoil that's getting ready to come here to the Americas, right? He was saying that he was saying that uh, to, to all um, people people need to start getting uh, tools, to gun to generators, and food and water, uh, uh, a, a way to filter water. Yep. He was saying all this stuff, and then your and your spirit, you go, hey, he might be right, but then you remember, you go, we got the heavenly father on our side, man, and he's going to be the one to defend us in those days. Right. Just when you look, we, when we were in the wilderness, right. The Heavenly Father gave us uh, chicken and biscuits, man. Man, man and quail, man. We, and and, and when, when there was no water, he put a tree in the water to sweeten it, yeah. right? When we were, he, he had uh, Moses uh, 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 split a stone, a rock, and water poured out that thing. Yep. The, the Heavenly Father can provide you food, man. They, they, it had, uh, it had um, who was it? Elijah that was being fed by the raven. Yeah. Right. And he, he said, look, he, he said, look, there was a famine in the whole land. He said, go to that, go down to little brook, that little brook down there. You can drink from the brook. Um, I got, I got, I already told the ravens, they got some food for you. You see, the Heavenly Father can do anything, man. That's right. When you had, when you had, uh, Elisha also. Daniel, yeah, he just said that. Yeah. When you had Daniel in the, in the, in the pit, who was it that brought him the food there? Habakkuk. 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 Right. Yeah, you, he brought him the food. And, and, and then, and then, and then, you know, all, all, all of these, uh, this, uh, what's that? Uh, what, what, what were the three kings? The, 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 that, and there's another one. There's another one I'm thinking of. What does it say? Uh, two and ten. Yes. Um, hit me with that. Hit me with that. Hit me with that. Sirach two and ten. Yep. 
Yep, that's it. That's the one. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 10. Yep, look that's at, the one. Uh, look at the generations of old. You see, yep. did ever... Uh, did ever any trust in the Lord in this profound or did any abide in the uh, look at the generations of old and see yep. did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded yep. or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken yeah, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken man that's we got to depend on you how about you know, shall, what's that in Proverbs or 3 yep. where it says uh, lean not unto thy own understanding or depend on what's, what's that 3 and 7 3 and 5, five. Somebody, somebody get that go ahead over so, uh, so Job 1 9 and 10 it says then Satan answered the Lord and said does Job fear the Most High for none? Right. Has not thou made a hedge about him yeah. and about his house yeah. and about all that he hath yeah. on every side yeah. that thou hast blessed the works of his hands yeah. and in the substance is increased in the land? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so yeah, there was a hedge around Job and there will be a hedge around us in those times of, of turmoil, man. Right. He said, my servants will eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull it up, pull it up. Yeah, bro. Oh, this is Psalms 37 and 23. Mm -hmm. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the by the Most High. Yep. And he delighted his way. Though he fall, he yep. shall not be utterly cast down. Yep. For the Lord, Yahweh Shimei Hashai, upholdeth him with his hand. That's it. I have been young, and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, mm -hmm. nor his seed begging bread. That's it, man. So the Heavenly Father is going to fight for us. He's going to defend us, man. You got to, you got to believe that, right? Uh, what is that? Uh, where it says, it says in, in, uh, in Hebrews 11 and 6, where it says you must believe that He is. You got to believe it. You got to believe that He can do it, right? So you, you think about. I mean, and granted, we, I mean, this water in the basement. They got a little water. You got some, uh, some beans down there, some dried beans. You know, just to get, just go ahead. You see, it's all the spirit, man. The spirit is on this, right? Because one would say to us, and we, we're talking about America being destroyed, and then we're talking about not leaving. Well, what, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to stay right here and hope that Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shad delivers me. The scriptures tell us that we're saved in hope. Zerach 2 and 6. Mm -hmm. Believe in him. <laughs> And he will help thee. Yeah, yeah. Order thy way right yeah. and trust in yeah, him. Yeah. Believe in him and he'll help thee, man. So we we gonna we gonna be all right, man. Just when you think, look, you know, it's, it's funny. There's been a, 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 a increase in rabbits in my my yard. Every time I come home, I'm like, man, where the fuck are these rabbits coming from, man? But they the rabbits they eat the clovers. They eat the the clovers in the in the in the grass. I'm like, damn, the Lord the Lord is feeding the rabbits, man. I didn't I didn't. I didn't plant no clover leaf or none of that or, or dandelion leaf. It just grows. And the Heavenly Father feeds the animals in the in the in the in the world, man. You see these, these birds and squirrels? Squirrel, I seen a, a squirrel uh, uh digging a little hole and put his little he had a nut in his mouth, he came here and put it in a hole. And I had walked by, he looked, I said, you good, man, go ahead and bury, bury your little nut, man. I ain't, I ain't gonna do nothing to you. You know, he put his thing down there, covered it up, you know, the more, the more. Uh, the Lord is the Lord is going to provide all the things that we need. Man. Matthew six twenty six. Uh, uh, start at nineteen. Uh, Matthew six and nineteen. Lay not, lay, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, yep. where thieves break through and steal. Yep. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Yep. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor right. steal. So you know, they, they, you got you and Jake, man. They'll be, they'll be, they'll get on these podcasts and they'll start talking about investing. Oh man, you know, there's this, there's this loophole where you can, you, you, you haven't been claiming your. If you work, you are supposed to be able to claim this money right here, and you can take that twenty thousand and, and, and buy a house. That's a down payment on a house, and then you build that one and you. you renovate it, you live there for a few months, and then you take the equity out of that house and you buy another house. You can be a millionaire if you just work a regular night. And you start looking, you're like, oh shit, let me break this down. I don't know what it, I don't know what I saw it on, man, but I, you know, I catch these clips here and there. You know, you get the YouTube shorts. And you catch those clips and you start thinking about it. Oh, that ain't a bad idea. But then you, you have to remember, our, our investment is in the things on high. You know? Verse 20. 21 for where your treasure is there will your heart be also the light of the body is the eye if therefore thy eye is single 
thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye is evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness? Yep, yep. 24. So, so in other words, right, the, the scripture is telling us to be to be focused, right? To be focused, be focused on the things that we're talking about investing in, right? Just be focused on the scripture, being focused on teaching, right? That's what we need to be focused on. Being focused on the brotherhood, the body, and helping any way you can. You know? Go ahead. No man can serve two masters. Yep. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Yeah, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other, right? So keep, our, keep, the, keep the main thing the main thing, you know? You cannot serve the most high in mammon. Yeah. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, right. nor yet for your body. Yeah, what you shall put on. What you shall put on. Yeah. It's not the life more than raiment, no, so lucky. it's not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Yep, yep. Behold, the fowls of the air, yeah. but they sow not, yep. neither do they reap. Right, they, they, don't, they don't work. You know, the fowls of the air, the pigeon ain't got no job. Like the Sometimes we get the, the little, little patties and they got the bread sprinkled on them. The oh, it's dinner time. It's dinner time, they get their little pieces and they go and you know, walk off and let the other birds steal the little piece. No, nor gather into bonds. Yep. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Yep. Are ye not much better than they? All right. So as we as we talk about all of this destruction and all of this turmoil, we'll be read in on Matthew twenty four and seven where it talks about famine and the pestilences. When we read about those things, the reason why we can read about them with such confidence is because we believe that the Yahweh is going to protect us and deliver us. We've got some some well, you know. uh, Isaiah sixty five and twelve. Yep. The points at thirteen and fourteen. Uh, therefore, uh, therefore, will I number you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, you did not answer; when I spake, you did not hear, yep. but did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Yep. Therefore, thus said the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Behold, my servant shall eat, yep. but ye shall be hungry. Yep. But behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Yeah. So the heavenly Father, He's going to make sure that there's plenty. When you, when you see this movie, uh, The Road, right? What was they doing? They was walking around. It was cold outside. Their dad had that pistol. Three bullets left. You know, two, two bullets, two bullets left. He, he made a way for them, man. They, they were living good for a couple of days, man. One of went down in that, uh, it was, uh, the, what's that, the, 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 the Walker had the, uh, canned can goods up there. It was in the string beans. And what the crazy thing about it, 20 yards to the left, the house was there, and they were eating people. Yeah, yeah, Little yeah, did they know there yeah. was a little bunker right there. That's how the Lord was going to set it up for us. Yeah, yeah. That's how the Lord was going to set it yeah. up for us. Yeah. Took a bath, gave his son a bath, put the little water in his head, was washing his hair and everything like that. Yeah. The Lord going the Lord going to make sure that the, the men of the Lord are good, man. You know? They need to hope to be in that small bro. Um, this is uh, Psalms 104 and 10, and it reads, He set the springs into the valley which run among the hills, they gave drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quenched their thirst. Yep. By them shall the fowls of heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He walked the hills from his chambers. Go ahead. Sorry, bro. He watered the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He caused the grass to grow for the cattle and herbs for the service yeah, of men. Matter of fact, matter of fact. Uh, when um, uh, Jehoshaphat and Jehoram, when they went to uh, when they went up through the wilderness of Edom to go uh, to, to fight against Moab, what did Elisha tell them to do? He told them to dig dig ditches all over the place, right? So and he said he said you and your cattle are gonna be able to drink, right? Right? So that's the Lord. The Lord is going. This scripture is all over the place that should build you up in that way. Go ahead, bro. Should like back you up, right? Yeah. Um, the Heavenly Father, you know, he didn't create these resources for one group of people. He created it for everybody to benefit on the face of the planet. Yep, 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 that's it, that's it. Yep. Go ahead, bro. Second, second Kings 3, right? Uh, uh, yes, yes. So, yep, second Kings 3, inside of verse 8. Yep. And he said, which way shall we go up? Yep, yep. And he answered, the way through the wilderness of Edom. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the king of Israel went and the king of Judah and the king of Edom, yep. and they fetched a compass of seven days journey, yep. and there was no water 
for the host and for the cattle that follows yep, yep. Continue on, right? Yep, keep uh, And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them to the hand of Moab. Right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, but uh, Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of, right. of the Lord? Right, so so they always inquire the Heavenly Father. Right? Here it is, they're in dire straits, right? Damn, man, we, we took this long journey and now we don't have no water, we don't we, we don't ran out of food, right? So now what do they do? What do they do? They inquired at the hands of the Heavenly Father about where they were prophet, right? Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord yep. that we may inquire of the Lord by him? Yep. And one of the kings of Israel's servant answered and said, here is Elisha, the son of Shepat, yep. uh, which poured water on the hands of, uh, of uh, uh, Elijah. Salah, here. Uh, Elijah. So I'm again, I got tongue tied. Uh, <laughs> and Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. Mm -hmm. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Yep. And Elisha uh, said unto the king of Israel, yep. What have I to do with thee? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get thee to the prophets yeah, of yeah. thy father yeah. and the prophets of thy mother. Yeah. And the king of Israel said unto him, yeah, Nay. Good, good, good. Uh, uh, Jehoram was one of the, uh, the wicked kings. You know? mm -hmm. So Elisha was like, What are you doing over here, man? What did he told you to come over here? Go, go see the gods of your, your, your fathers, right? You had them, right? Go ahead. Uh, for the Lord have called these two kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Yeah. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts living, behold, who, whom I stand, yeah. surely uh, were it not that I regarded the presence of Jehoshaphat, yeah. the king yeah. of Judah. Said, Look, man, if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, I, I wouldn't even fuck with you. <laughs> you know? You, you, you love me, you got your man here, right? Right, but he, he ended up telling him what to do, whatever. I will not look toward thee nor see thee, but now bring thee a mystery. And it came to pass when the mystery played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Yep, make this valley full of ditches, right? So they, they got to digging, right? Go ahead. Yep. Uh, verse uh, 17 For thus said the Lord, yep. he shall not see wind, neither shall he see rain. Yep. Yet that valley shall be filled with water yep. that you may drink, yep. both ye yep. and your cattle so and your beasts. There wasn't no rain, no storm came through there, but the Lord provided with the water. The Lord is going to do the same thing for us. The Lord is going to do the same thing for us. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got you to you go, go to bed at night and sleep easy. I, I told this story before. I had a, a friend of mine from in the world. Yeah, uh, that uh, that Seven had happened. He came to the house. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, yeah, man, my job is trying to make me take that thing, man. He said, he said, I don't want to do it. I said, don't do it. He said, yeah, man, you know, this is a good job. You're trying to, you know, trying to keep my job. I said, listen. Man. He said, I mean, there's options. You need, you know, get a religious, religious exemption and all of this different stuff that you can do. Yeah, I tried that. They said, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get that. He said, he said, what you, what about you? What you gonna do? I didn't take it. Said, what, what about your job? What if you lose your job? Well, look, you know, my job is just, you know, so I had to find another way. He was looking at me. He was looking at me, man. He said, he said man, man. He said, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. He said, I thought you was gonna switch up. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stand your ground, man. There's nothing you can do. Either you're going to take it or you're not. Yeah, either you're going to take it or you're not. Yeah, either you're going to take it or you're not. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they still have them. They still have You can go online and get them, but you're just going to have to get it. Yeah, but it all depends, too, though. It's a ticket, too. I believe you got to critique it yeah. to fit, you know, what you what you do. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of these generic ones, because they see a lot of these generic ones. Yeah. They're at my job. A lot of these generic ones, they've already been on top of that. So if you just submit some shit you find online, yeah. you got to critique that bad boy yeah. and make it say what you need it to say. Yeah. That way, when they see it, they're gonna be like, oh, this is something that's real because these other ones, the generic shit they have, they aren't real. You know, yeah. those are needed, but we know. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Kind of going to your testimony. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 10 and 39. He that findeth his life 
shall lose it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he that loseth his life for my sake shall yeah. find it. I mean, and they used to find me, man. They used to find me when I, when I first got the truth. Uh, oh, 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 read the Bible? Yeah, read the Bible? Yeah, man. Yeah, that's so, that's so cool. Yeah, they, they were they were clown, but then you know one of them one of them was like, hey, hey y'all 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 leave them alone, he's doing, he's doing this thing. But hey, now look, now you want to come to the house and ask me what's going on? But, look, the Lord, the Lord, look, I said, I said, I said to him, I said, you might want to start praying. That's what I told him. You might want to, you might want to start praying. I said, look, the Lord, the Lord's name, the Lord's name is how how in the sun name is how we Is that Proverbs 3 and 5? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Proverbs 3 and 5, yeah. and it reads, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, yeah. and lean not unto thine own understanding. Right. Trust, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. That's our only option. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? You're not gonna take it. You're gonna, you're gonna take the chip, you're gonna take the... What are you gonna do? You, you have no other option. But to depend on your how about shit, how charge. You have to give your help. That's it, man. Go ahead, bro. This is Isaiah 33 and 6, and yeah. it reads, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability yeah. of yeah. thy times. Yeah, wisdom and knowledge of what? Of the scriptures. Yeah. That's what's that's what's gonna be the stability of our time, man. You might you might have to you might have to you might have to um you know you know you know decline that the bologna sandwich that they offer you. <laughs> Oh, 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 and strength of salvation yep. to fail the Lord, Yahweh Basimi outside, yep. is his treasure. That's it, man. So, you know, our stability is going to be if Yahweh Basimi outside, man. Brother, watch your back. That's man. what's going to save us. Yep. That's what's going to save us. That's the same thing, brother. Come, come. Another guy that be driving, he, he come, he come close. Mm -hmm. you know, my head got a little bit more driving school. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I got some. You, you still had that problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put more in there. Everything straight? Um, yeah. So, yeah. I think going back to Proverbs, going on to verse six, it says, "In all thy ways acknowledge Him." Yeah, in all thy ways acknowledge Him. Everything that happens to you in life, good or bad, is all through the spirit of power you have about you. Everything. All the things that happen to you. You gotta look at it. Listen, it could be something that's happening to you that you think is bullshit, right? And you think about it, you're like, damn, the Lord is doing this uh, for, for my benefit. You know? You might think it's something bad, you might get stressed out, you know, but the Lord is doing it for your benefit, man. Huh? It, it says, He shall direct thy paths. It yep. says, Be not wise in thy own eyes. Yep. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Yeah, be not wise in thine own eyes. Man. Look, man. We don't, what do we know? What do we know? The scriptures tell us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. So what do we know? We don't know nothing, man. You got, we, we've, been in, we've been in arguments, and somebody will say, Well, what about this? What do we say? We got a scripture. <laughs> Uh, just, just tell me. Just tell me what you think it is. Don't, don't, don't read the Bible. Just tell me what you think it is. But no, we can't accept that. We can't do that. We gotta, we gotta read the scriptures. That's our way. And and we, we learned our lesson, so to speak, right? We learned our lesson by, by uh, departing from this, trying to think of our own thing. No, we gotta go by what the scriptures say. This is the, the say, uh, the, the the coal of the of the world, man. This is what. This is how you filter. The information that comes in. And that's why I always tell people, oh, did you hear about this? I'm like, oh, I really don't get into that. Oh, oh, but you just, 
They said it. They said it. <laughs> filtering through the scriptures, it ain't true to me. If I if I don't see a, a scripture that I can read to, to validate it, I'm like, right, man. Who, who, uh, did he? I don't know about that, man. Even though it's entertaining. But I'll say this, though. I was saying this brother earlier. He's got to be them spirits back from Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Oh, yeah, man. The shit that these devils are doing. 100%. They're doing some real yeah. wicked shit, man. Bring him hither so we may yeah. know him. Yeah. yeah. They're doing some real wicked shit, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Damn same spirits. Real dark. <laughs> This is uh Sirach Sirach is crazy, man. He's uh nuts. Sirach five and seven, yeah. He says no no. Nope. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy securities. Thou shalt be destroyed. Yo, yo, you think you good, you know, sitting back, sitting on the couch? Yeah, I got, I got, you know, I got a certain amount of money and I got about six months worth of my expenses in the account. All right, All right, nigga, you, you going, you going, you going to type up the, that account information, you're going to say zero. You're going to say negative, negative $536. Man. That's a bad feeling. You ever open your, your, your bank account? You be like, oh, yeah, minus, minus the five. Minus the five. Your fucking account, you think you got $20? That's a negative 36. Oh, it's, it's that moment of truth. You go to the store, you know, you sit low, you swipe that card, you be sitting there waiting, and she be looking at the car. You like the person in the car looking at you. Yo, she could be one time, I was like, oh, what's the wrong card? I got the pool, get the car. Get up on that store, all the last man. Yeah, man. It says here, and perish in the day of vengeance. Yeah, man. So, you know, the Lord, the Lord. Is going, is going to fight for us, man. Right. He's going to fight for us. That's right. And that's why we, we, we say these things about America uh, going down and being destroyed. And we can read Jeremiah 50, 51. We can go into uh, uh, Revelation 18. We can talk about woes. And we can talk about let the weak say I am strong. We can talk about the nuclear missiles. We can, we can talk about those things with such confidence because we believe that the Lord is going to deliver. He's going to deliver somebody. Right. We can't. We can't guarantee that it's going to be us, but we know he's going to deliver somebody. We hope that we're in that number. Man. We hope that we're in that number. What's that song, Oh Lord, I Want to Be in That Number with the Saints from March Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to be we want to be in that number, man. Yeah. That'll, that'll be Oh yeah, 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 to the of the world. yeah, yeah. Based on what you see in yeah, front of you, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be saying the same thing. I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I hope, I hope I make. I see this nigga here. I hope I make it. I hope I make it. This nigga here give me a good chance. Every time, every time I see a bad nigga, I say, yeah, go ahead, nigga, go ahead, do your thing. Good chance. If you keep doing what you're doing, right? Uh, Job chapter five verse nineteen. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yeah, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Yep. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. Yep. And in war from the power of the sword. Yeah, so, sword. So all the wars that are gonna happen here, the famine, all the skirmishes that are gonna happen here, all the sedition that's gonna happen here, we hope to be protected from those things. The Lord said he's gonna protect somebody. We hope it's us. We hope that we're, we're in that number, man. This is why the Apostle Mabar coined that term, the hopeful elect, man. Because we know there's an elect. We know there's a remnant. Because the scriptures tell us, we just hope that it's that it's us, that it's that it's us that's in that number. We know it's a small, uh, 144,000, right? In the in the let's say the, the one third, it's not a big number. When you think about the the population of the whole earth, it's not a it's not a lot of people, man. It's not a lot of people. So we hope we hope that it's us, man. And uh, so we got a good chance. You're damn right, man. You're damn right. This is why we keep doing this thing, man. You have to realize. The apostle. I was born in Asia. We've been doing that as long as I've been alive. Us, you know, 17 years or something like that now. You know, some brothers that they, that they, you know, 25 years. Some brothers that they 30 years, right? Um, and I, I say that because they, those people that 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 have those kind of that kind of devotion have a good chance, man. Have a good chance. Those of you who've been coming out and listening and learning and reading, you got a you got a better chance. You got a better chance than most. We, our our spot ain't guaranteed either. 
know, but you got a better, better chance than most. Better chance than most. Matthew 19, 27. Matthew 19, 27. Yep. It says, Then answered Peter said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we what shall we have therefore? And Yahweh Shah said unto them, Verily I say unto you, they which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in his throne of his glory, he shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Right. That's right. So that's the reform we're looking for, man. Peter said, we, we have forsaken all, man. We, we devoted our lives to follow you. I got to argue with my wife every time I go home. What am I going to get? Am I going to get something? I got to I gotta feel bad because my kids is looking at me crazy. Kids. <laughs> Real quick. You know, so my son said, Daddy, you want to teach? Him? Like, you know, he goes, I wish we could do something on Saturday and Sunday. We didn't have to teach. Yeah. I was like, oh, you got to teach for a minute. What you know? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it gets you. It gets you. Like, oh. you know, he's looking today. at me and shit. <clears throat> so like, yeah, uh, got, like my, son, my son today, um, you know, I'm, I'm leaving. He, he just broke down, man. I said, I said, I said what is it? He said, you said, you're leaving again. I said, you're leaving again. He said, you said, you said, you always going to work and then you going, you going to church, you said. I got more too, man. But the scriptures tell you this, though. The scriptures say, let your children look to you. Let your sons look to you. Right? And so you got to you gotta be out there doing the work. Not only yeah. that, not only that, like doing what we're doing, Lord willing, Lord willing to protect oh, our family, yeah. protect our young ones, to yeah. protect our families and all of us brothers. Yeah. By sacrifice, that's why we brought out that scripture, we have forsaken all, you know? We sacrifice so we may have protection when all hell breaks loose. Right. We may have that shield and buckler over us when there's no food out there in the streets. There's no help out there in the streets, you know? Right. Well, let's back to what, uh, this is Revelation 3 and 10. Mm -hmm. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, yep. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Right, right. Read, read it one more time. Yeah, come. It says, uh, Revelation uh, 3 and 10, it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also yeah, keep yeah, thee yeah, from the yeah, hour of temptation. So like that. I'm, no, no. So, <laughs> hey, hey, give me one more time. Come, time, come out again, time, man. Yeah, That's yeah, all yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Yo, um, Revelation 3 and 10. Yeah. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, yeah, 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 I will yeah. also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Right, right. The way we get kept from the hour of temptation is by keeping the, the, the ways of the Lord. Continue to do this thing. You know? I tell you, man, I, I've never I've never committed to a thing before. But this. But this. Now we can you might say you might want to get the Legos. Now you don't have to do that. You got to do that. You want to get the Legos and then happen the way you want to do it, it's a difficult to have a little But this is this has been something that we've been committed to in our our devotion to. Yeah, I'm the one who's reading who's that revelation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Hebrews 6 and 10. Yeah. For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and yeah. labor of love, yeah. which he hath showed toward his name, yeah. and that he have ministered to the saints to, and do minister. Yeah, man. So that's what we're doing, man. It's our job. This is our uh, profession. Mm -hmm. This is our, our life's work. You know, it, it feels good to, you know, scroll through your, your, your channel and see all the, you know, the work, the shows you got you got put up there. That's a, that's a good feeling, man. Okay. Um, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 13, and it reads, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Their works to follow them, man. You know? So, so we, do it, we do it in hopes that we can find deliverance. We do it in hopes that we can be protected in times of trouble. The Lord, the Lord, that's the Lord. He's always fighting for us. And we have a we have a record of that. You can go into history and see 
all the times that the Heavenly Father has defended men of the world. Let me touch up. Yeah, some real quick. You yeah, said yeah. that. So uh, Romans 15 and 4. Yep. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime yep. were written for our learning, yep. that we through patience and comfort of Scripture might have hope. Might have hope, man. Might have hope. Right? So all of those things that were written in the Scriptures, they were written to build us up. Right? All those examples. You got the example of the... Uh, uh, the three men that were thrown in the fire. Yeah. You got, you know, Daniel's example being thrown in the lion's den. You got, you got, uh, uh, Maccabean brothers. You got all of these different examples throughout yeah. history of yeah. men who depended on your Alba and your Shah and made it. They made it all right. So I feel that. And then one more example, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, Peter was thrown, to be, was thrown in prison, he was prosecuted to be killed. It's one of the problems, but the angel of the Lord came in, opened that gate, and let Peter yep. walk yep. free. Yep. Let, me, let me finish yep. off on that. Yeah. 29, it says, in, ver in, uh, in everyone that hath forsaken house, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. All right, shall inherit everlasting life. Yep. And that's what we're trying to do. But well, many. Uh, uh, Elder Pastor Bar did, a, did, a, did that show uh, recently where he said, uh, if you want to live forever, right? Because he, he, he got from that movie there, uh, uh, Movie High. Where he, where they, he was asking him, he said, whatever you want, knowledge can get it from you. He said, I'm going to live forever. You know? and that's us, man. We want to live forever. And then, like Elder Pastor Bar said, now we have the knowledge to be able to do it. You have the knowledge to be able to do for you. That's 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 what it says. But many, uh, but many that are first shall be last, mm -hmm. and the last shall be first. Just because uh, 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 Matthew 16 and uh, 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here who shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. We hope that's us, man. Anybody got anything else? Oh. That's up. Corinthians. Yeah, hit me. Uh, First Corinthians. Uh, so First Corinthians 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall now all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Yep. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye yep. Yep. at the last trump. Yep. For the trump shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, yep. Yep. and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortality, this more, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible should have put put on incorruption, and this mortal should have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, "Death is swallowed up in victory." Uh, this is uh, Philippians chapter three, verse eight, and it reads. Say ye doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh yeah. Shah Hamashiach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In other words, you chalk it up to the game, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want it, but hey, look, I'll, I'll lose it for Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. It says, uh, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, yep. and I do count them but dung, that I may win Hamashiach. Yeah, I do count them as dung. In, 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 in other words, it ain't shit. Right? It says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, yeah. which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Hamashiach, the righteousness, which is of the Most High by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made com com comfortable yeah. unto death if by any means that I might uh, attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Anything else? All right, so with that, you want to give all praises as always to Yahweh, Hashem, El Shabbat, Hashem, Kapodash. Come on, honestly, apostles, elders, the great millstone. Honor salutations to the elect. That I say. Shalom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you.